What do you get when you take a young Aussie vet and move him from the beaches of sunny Queensland to the Royal Borough of Richmond on London's historic River Thames? Hello. Hi, guys. The British people love animals. Hey, do you miss mummy? For me, they're kindred spirits. Caring for creatures great and small, there's never a dull moment for Dr. Scott Miller. That is far too forward, I'm afraid. Yeah. And grateful owners certainly know who to turn to in their hour of need. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Scott cares, and I don't think you can fake that. And normally, as a vet, you know, you can have a... A sort of a lie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> tough northerner and supposed to be a tough Australian. And look what dogs do to him. This big-hearted boy from Oz is making his mark in one of the biggest cities in the world. He's going down the pole. Going down the pole with his mates. <laughs> I doff my cap to the doctor. Ah, that's a bit too much time here, mate. On this episode of Vet on the Hill... Oh, All right then, champ, you're going to be brave. Well done. Good boy. Oh. Bam Bam's owner is overseas, but can Scott and his family help the little terrier win the toughest battle of his life? He just loved the cuddles, loved the snuggles, loved all the attention. You can just give him a little bath. It's nice and gentle. His platelet count is... there aren't any. An emergency that no one will ever forget. He is bleeding from absolutely everywhere. He's in real grave danger, and we need to give him this blood transfusion now. You happy? Just a little bit. <laughs> An emotional reunion for Emma. She's my best friend, and she's my child all at the same time. So it's, yeah, it's very special. <laughs> He's surprisingly friendly for a wild bird, but you're acting weird. And will Scott be able to solve this parakeet puzzle? OK. That might be a problem. You shivering, Bam Bam? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Doggy babysitters Natasha and her son Josiah have arrived at the Richmond Clinic with eight-year-old Bam Bam. We'll see the vet shortly. I'll fix you up nice and better. Don't worry, Bam Bam. Yeah. We brought Bam Bam in today because um, we found that Bam Bam was getting a bit lethargic and um, he wasn't eating his food like he normally does. And, and he was just constantly drinking water and constantly going to the toilet, which we found very worrying. Don't worry, your mummy will be back very shortly. You'll be able to see your mummy soon, yeah? The Maltese Terrier's owner, Alyssa, is overseas. So far, we've been looking after him for the last two weeks, and we've noticed that within the last few days is when his health has de deteriorated. Looking at the way that he is and how frail he is, we are a bit scared, I have to say. Hi there, guys. How are you doing? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, Bam Bam. Oh, buddy, you're not looking so well, are you? All right, come on into the console. Let's have a better look, shall okay. we? Bam Bam is in a really bad way. You can see straight away that he's shivering, he's shaking, he looks very, very quiet. I know Alyssa and I know how much she loves this dog. Yes. So I think it's very important that we've uh, got a chance to see him today. Let's just unwrap him okay. and see what we've got. Oh my goodness, you have shrunk. What has happened to you, mate? Bam Bam and his mum Alyssa are regular clients of ours and to see Bam Bam literally have shrunk before my very eyes is concerning indeed. So you say he's been drinking a lot? Yes. And he's been then urinating a lot? Yes. Not been eating particularly well? No. Well, and no then... food at all within the last three days. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Bam Bam, buddy. Hey, let's have a little look at you. If I get you just to pop your hands around his shoulders okay. there. Thank you. He's looking a little bit pale. His gums are a little pale there. He's definitely a little bit dehydrated, which is amazing when you see him drinking so much. Yes. Um, you think, of course, he's drinking enough to um, keep him well hydrated, yeah. but in this case, not. Yeah. Let's spin him around. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. You're just a skin and bone. 
lucky he's got all this fur. It's certainly hiding the fact that he is exceptionally thin. Yes. His bones are sticking out of his skin and he's very, very weak. This is not a well dog. So let's okay. just pop him on the scales. Good boy. Good lad. Good lad. It's okay. He's actually lost about half of his body weight. He was 4.6 uh, the last time I saw him and he's now 2.6. When patients come in and they've lost five or 10%, that's still cause for concern. When a dog comes in and loses 50% of its body weight, that's a real worry. He is showing a lot of the classic symptoms of diabetes. Now it could be a whole bunch of other things as well, um, and none of them are very nice, but diabetes you can kind of relate almost to a car that's leaking petrol. If you put a hole in the petrol tank, that energy seeps away and eventually the car stops. Okay. We're in a position now where Bam Bam is close to stopping and we need to make sure that we provide him with everything he needs to stay around, don't we mate? Okay. Hey? Yeah. Particularly when your poor mummy's on holiday. Yeah. So what we need to do is to immediately have him in hospital, run a few okay. tests mm -hmm. and see exactly how unwell he is. If it is diabetes, we need to start treating straight away and that will be with injections. So of course, he'll have to stay here at the clinic. If Natasha and Josai hadn't brought Bam Bam in today, I really would have worried that he wouldn't have made the night. This is a very thin, very sick dog and he definitely needs our help. Well look, you guys just say a quick goodbye and then I'm gonna take him down to the hospital, all right? It was definitely hard to say goodbye to Bam Bam today taking him away like this, it just felt heartbreaking, you know, so, but I know that he's in the best of hands. I'm just glad that we got him here on time. Yeah. Right, try it again. Nice, oh, nicely done. Yeah, she's got it, she's got it. Nearby in Twickenham, a young family has taken in a very sick parakeet. Oh, she's dropped it again. Dawn is one of Scott's four sisters-in-law, and her children, Henry and Olive, are animal crazy. You remember what she was like yesterday? <gasps> she was in a bad way. We were in the park with the kids, and one of Scott's neighbours comes over to us and says, oh, you're Scott's sister-in-law. You know, do you know anything about birds? Can you come over and help? And I thought, yeah, my sister married a vet. Of course I can help you with a bird. <laughs> anyway, he went over to have a look, and, um, and yeah, sure enough, this bird was in a pretty bad way. Around her eye, mm. I can kind of see a very, very thin circle of blue, like her eyes. Oh, wow. Me, do you think maybe she's just made it that colour because she wants to be in our family or something? <laughs> I think the kids are probably pretty keen to keep the bird. That's why my house is full of animals, because they keep rescuing stuff. My nickname for my house is now The Ark. Um, they don't come in two by two, they sometimes come in threes or fours as well. You think kids going to be OK? I don't know, mate. Scotty's on his way. Very much looking forward to Scotty coming over today to just explain a bit about what might have happened to the bird, what we can expect from the future, and what the best thing to do is, you know, it's a wild animal we've found. What are we supposed to do next, really? Come on, Daddy. Hang in there. Hey, Sam. Hi. Right so... now, Uncle Scott and vet nurse Sam are busy trying to find out what's caused Bam Bam's massive weight loss. I'm concerned about a number of possible conditions, diabetes being at the top of the list. So mm -hmm. let's take some bloods and okay. see what we can find, see shall we? See what's wrong with you. Diabetes is a condition where animals just can't produce enough insulin, the hormone responsible for converting sugars into stored energy. He's going to be brave, aren't you? He hasn't got the energy to fight, I'm mm. afraid. Mm. Bam Bam is like a car leaking petrol. Because of his diabetes, he's losing a hell of a lot of energy, of glucose, and he's urinating it out. But unlike a car, when it stops, when it's run out of petrol, Bam Bam will keep going. He'll start breaking down fats, and that will lead to toxic products, which will then accumulate in his body, and if left, he'll die. Good boy. Okay, good boy, Bam Bam, well mm -hmm. done. All right, I'll give our fellow a cuddle. Do you mind running that for yeah, me, please? 
Diabetes sounds like it should be something very manageable and very treatable, and very often it is, but it can get to an exceptionally severe stage, and certainly Bam Bam is showing all the signs that he is at that stage. You just need lots of love and cuddles, don't you? A lot of faith as well, because you are not well at all. What's your mummy going to say, hey? She's going to be very worried about you. As the results come through, Scott's fears are confirmed. Bam Bam's results really aren't good. It's clear that he is a diabetic. Uh, his blood glucose level is through the roof. And at the same time, uh, he's got a lot of other changes suggestive of an exceptionally unwell dog. The next step for Bam Bam is that we'll need to hospitalize him and place him on a drip. That will help to hydrate him and also to correct some of the changes that I can see on the bloods. Well done. All right, Sam, if you want to pop him in the yeah. little camera for me, that'd be great. You get lots of lump and cuddles. Bam Bam's chances of survival at the moment, I just can't tell you. He is very, very unwell. He's very, very thin and dull and weak. He's not eating, he's not drinking, he's dehydrated. So I just don't know what's going to happen with him. Bye, Bam Bam. You've got to get better. Boy, stay fair. Boy. I'll see you soon. Henry, what have you guys got in there for me? A bird! No way, let's have a look. Scott's now answering an SOS call, and this time it's family hey, business. Hey, Johnny, how are you? Good to see you, mate. You're right. Good to see you. And you. There's not an animal in my house. <laughs> yes, and it's not looking particularly well. Can we take this off and have yeah, a look? Yeah, yeah, should we do that? Wow. I have to oh. say, she's 100% better than she was yesterday. Really not looking very good yesterday at all. Yeah. His sister-in-law, Dawn, and her kids, Henry and Olive, are concerned about their new house guest. She and was basically staying still a lot yesterday, but today she's sort of a bit frantic and nervous. OK. Tell me how you found the bird yesterday. She was on the ground, right at the tree, just staring at it. I just primed the kids with the fact that she was probably not going to pull round, but mm. this is amazing. She isn't drinking, she isn't eating. She's basically just refusing to do anything. Looking at the bird for the first time, it's definitely sustained a shock. It looks like it's some kind of head trauma as a result of flying into a tree. It's definitely a little brighter than it was yesterday, according to Dorney, but this is not a well bird. Apart from trying to assess the parakeet, Scott's also grappling with another complication. It's a controversial issue what to do with the Indian ringneck parakeet because it has been around for a number of years, but it definitely isn't native. It's thought that maybe it was just a few birds that were released by accident and there's now thousands in the skies. It's a little bit of a worry though because they're quite a bully of a bird and they're actually pushing a lot of native species out of their nesting sites. So morally, should I even be allowed to release it? And that, I don't know. This bird clearly has been through shock, and shock is actually exceptionally dangerous in birds. And even up to 24 hours after a serious injury, they can literally just drop dead. I've actually even had a budgie that I was clipping nails die in my hand. Right. They're that responsive to shock. So wow. it's great that it's lasted this long, and 24 hours later, it's moving around a little bit more, which is all positive. But, you know, kids, I, I can't promise what's going to happen here. So I think what I'm going to do, if it's OK with you, is I'm going to yeah. take the little birdie to the clinic. OK. And I'm going to have a little look and just see what's going on and see how much damage has been done okay. and if this birdie can go back to the wild. Whenever you are looking after kids, you know that they are going to bond with animals very quickly. And of course, Olive and Henry, straight away, they find the bird, they love the bird. So I'm going to do my damn just to make sure that this bird pulls through. Guys, we just have to remember, Scotty knows best OK with this, so whatever he says we need to do, that's what needs to happen, OK? Mm. OK. All right, then. See you later, kids. See you, Donnie. Yeah, take, take it care. easy. Thanks, Scott. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, honey. See take ya. care. See you later. See you later, mate. 
It will be quite hard on the kids if uh, if the parrot doesn't come back. But at the same time, you know, I think they, they knew they were doing the right thing. They just wanted to bring it back from the brink. Off to the vet practice. Here she comes. You feeling excited? Oh, I just can't believe it's actually happening. Meanwhile, Scott's head vet nurse Emma and her partner Steve are at the Kingston Riding Centre, waiting for a very special delivery. She really has come a long way. I'm excited, I'm nervous, I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> Three years ago, Emma reluctantly left behind Vava Voom, also known as V, in her hometown Hi. in Portugal. Hi! Hi, Bubs! Scott had convinced his right-hand nurse to follow him from Portugal to London to set up his first practice in Richmond. I think he offered me the job four times before I actually accepted it, um, and it has turned out to be the best thing that I've ever done. He is the big brother that I don't have. Hello. <laughs> Bringing V out to London was definitely a huge decision, but the final piece of the puzzle of my life moving to London. Hello, my darling. Hello. When the door opened and you see her there, happy ears forward looking at me, it's, it's a proud moment, it's a happy moment, and it's very, very emotional. I don't think I could pick one word to describe it. It's the feeling of having something taken away from you that's suddenly given back, something very special. How they become such a big part of your life, of your family, of your heart. You happy? Just a little bit. <laughs> Emma's been quite nervous, to, to say the least. But, you know, the more she thought about it, the more excited she got. And, and closer to the day, it was, I don't even think she slept that well last night because she was so excited. Hello. Hi, Bubs. <laughs> She's gorgeous. How are you feeling? She's my best friend and she's my child all at the same time, so it's... Yeah, it's very special. <laughs> she helps me. I love how she makes me better. I love how she makes me enjoy life a little bit more. Yeah. Let's have a look. See if you got me my best life. <gasps> oh! This is going framed. I definitely just look forward now to being able to get a few hours in my day and just be able to go and ride. I think Steve will be uh, definitely left at home watching the football while I spend my weekends up here with my, uh, with my other love. Other other love. It's good, good compliments. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? No. Oh. Who's there? Look, he's a bit handsome. Hey, Nath. Hey, where you got that? Oh, I've been picking up birds again. <laughs> <laughs> this time, my sister-in-law, Dawny, has found a rather unwell ring-necked parakeet. Today is all about uh, having a look and seeing what's wrong with it. So let's bring you through the consult room and have a little look, shall we? So this bird has sustained some kind of trauma, some kind of injury. I don't know what it is yet, so I do need to do a full, thorough clinical exam. Let's have a look at you, shall we? Hey. I right, start with the head, have a little look around there, have a look at the eyes, have a look at the beak, is there any discharge? Then I go and have a look at the wings and see are they healthy? And also to see if the bird has any condition, I press on its breast muscles, which would suggest the bird's been eating recently. And then finally go down to the back end and just see is there any diarrhea? Is the bird at all unwell? You look like a pretty healthy little bird, really, don't you? You're really surprisingly friendly for a wild bird. Yes, you are. You're acting weird, aren't you? Hey? This bird is showing some really weird behaviours. The fact that she's not particularly frightened of me, nor is she trying to fly away, that is strange for a wild bird. So I do need to do a further few checks just to find out exactly what's going on. OK. That might be a problem. Hmm. You can't see, can you? Hmm? Let's just try something here, shall we?
So little birdie, what I should be seeing is your pupils constricting or getting smaller, but it's pretty obvious that you can't see that light at all. You really can't see anything. You're not responding to me doing this and you're not responding to light. This is a healthy bird that has all of a sudden lost her vision. And I would suggest that's because she's simply flown into a tree, hit her head in the place that controls vision. And sadly now she's blind and I don't know when her blindness will resolve, if ever. And because you're a non-native invasive species, I can't let you go anyway. But now being blind, I've got no choice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip your wings so you don't injure yourself. You don't need any more visits to the vet, do you? And then we need to try and encourage you to eat. Nath, can I get you? Give us a hand with the bird, please, mate. This little bird's blind, and as a result, if she can fly, she can injure herself. And so if I clip her wings, she won't be able to get the lift that she needs to fly and would be much more safe. There's no nerves going down the feathers. So it's a bit like cutting hair. As long as it's done carefully, it's very safe and non-painful. The parakeet will now need to stay in the clinic for observation for at least another 24 hours. So now that you clipped her wings, what are you gonna do with her now? We need to find you a home, don't we? Hmm? Hmm. I know a couple of kids that I might be able to twist their arm and see if they'll take on a new birdie. Hey, mummy might not be so pleased, but hey, it's all right. Hey, another angry sister-in-law. Yeah, I've got so many as it is. Ooh, you're liking that, aren't you? Here we go. <laughs> I'm so happy with this guy. He is doing so much better, isn't he? He's hurt hey. up so much. He's yeah, I know. so lively. Two days later, and Bam Bam is definitely on the road to recovery. Hey, okay, well, let's see. You're going to eat some food because that is the key to starting to control your diabetes, isn't it? When his babysitters Natasha and Josiah brought him in, the Maltese Terrier had lost a life-threatening amount of weight. There you go, you're just a skin and bone. Scott discovered Bam Bam was suffering from a severe case of diabetes. You are not well at all. With his owner overseas, the terrier was admitted to the practice for 24-hour care. Yeah, you're getting better, better and better. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Bam Bam is so thin, painfully thin, and we need to get some weight on this guy. The only way to do that, of course, is when he starts eating, and of course, then starting the insulin injections, which will help him store that energy as fat. Okay, good boy. Good boy, that's it. Wow. God, the difference in the last few days is just massive, isn't it? He's suddenly come back to life. I know, he really has. What a good boy. There you go. Hey, so we can start giving you some insulin now, can't we? You lost so much weight, didn't you? You're already starting to put some weight on, which is great, but still a long way to go. As insulin injections will help you do that, though, won't they? Yes, they will. But we're going to need to give them every 12 hours. So that means that uh, he can't be left. So I know where I can take him, where not only he can get lots of love and affection, but also 12 hourly insulin injections. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Because Bam Bam has improved, now I can start giving him more regular insulin injections. And when the injections are given, sometimes they can go to hyperglycemia or low blood sugar. They can go into coma and even die. So he needs to be monitored very, very closely. And I think that's best done at my place. Okay, mate. Let's get you comfortable. Good boy. Okay, mate, you ready for this? Hey, <laughs> you wanted attention. Scott's on his way home with Bam Bam. The terrier now needs 12 hourly insulin injections after just being diagnosed with diabetes. Family! Hey, Look what I've got! Look. Bam Bam's owner Alyssa is heading back to Richmond from her overseas trip. 
Whenever we have patients long-term in the practice, the one thing that I do notice is that they really look for love and affection. And the great thing about bringing them home is they get bucket loads. Hey. Can I touch your hair? Of course you can. Well, it's first of all, it's a little boy. Oh, no! Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What's his name? His name is Bam Bam. JJ, no! Bam Bam actually seemed really chilled out with the kids. He just loved the cuddles, loved the snuggles, loved all the attention. He seemed to be a very happy boy. All right, mate, it's blood and injection time now, isn't it? Do I get to have a snuggle Absolutely. now? Not you, the dog. Oh, hello, <laughs> little man. Hello. Oh, you are just delicious. You are just delicious. You're so cute. OK, no, so right. I'm going back to... Back to training from Back the old days. Back to your days. nurse training days, yeah. Back to the old days. Come on, Bam Bam. I can remember this. I can remember this. I'm very lucky to have a wife who doubles as a vet nurse from time to time. So whenever I bring patients home, she's always there, ready to lend a hand. Unless they're cats. She's not great with cats. So what are you testing for here? Uh, just testing for blood glucose. Just okay. holding that on for me there, my love. Thank you. Um, yeah, just to see what his sugar levels are right now, just before we give his insulin. It was a very short vet nursing career, 18 months, and I was good with the dogs. I think I was. I think Scott would say I was good with the dogs, but cats, I was just rubbish with cats. That's 8.2, so what's that out of? The normal range is between five and eight. He's been up to 30 oh, wow. whilst we've been looking after him. OK. Oh, All right then, champ, you're going to be brave. Oh, well done. Good boy. Oh, brave. Brave boy. Brave puppy. He's very thin still, though, hey? He is. He's got a long road ahead of him, this guy. <laughs> Haven't you, hey? It was like the team back together today, me holding the holding little fluffy doggy, Scott doing his bit. It was nice to just kind of go, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. I can help you out with this one. OK, who's going to help me bath him? Oh, me. I will, I will. OK, so put your thing. hand out. There we go. Let's put a little bit of shampoo on there. That's it. There you go. And just give him a little bath. That's it, nice and gentle. So we decided that Bam Bam looked like he needed a bit of a spruce up. So we thought, what nicer thing to do than give him a little bath in the kitchen sink. OK, now be nice and gentle. Remember, he's a really little doggy. He's got his head all fluffy and crazy. He's such a nice boy, isn't he, Summer? He's adorable. Bam Bam, he needs you so nice and clean. Yeah. After your bath, Bam Bam, you're going to go to bed. <laughs> For me, life isn't complete unless animals are in it. And as much as we absolutely adore our kids, to have the animals alongside and to see how much the kids love them, for me, is the perfect form of family life. There you go. Oh, good drawing, Quinn. All right, let's all go off to bed, shall we? Come on. Come on, go. Bam Bam. Come on, Bam Bam. Yeah, horsey. Yeah. yeah. I do really need to get back to the clinic now, but I know that Bam Bam's in really safe hands here at the house. Uh, all the injections have been given, and you never know, the little guy, if he plays his cards right, he might even get a lullaby as well. So you better stay warm with Teddy as he tucks you to bed. The kids are completely in love with him, and Scott's going to know he's got a job on his hands to take this dog away, but there is an owner somewhere who's going to want him back. Night night, Bam Bam. But just as Scott is heading back to work, there's an urgent call from Maz, the practice manager. Hello? Hey, Scott, it's Maz. Listen, we need you to get back to the clinic as soon as possible, OK? We've got an emergency that's come in. Charlie's been brought in. He's collapsed and barely conscious. Steph and Emma are doing everything they can to keep him stable until you get back, but I really need you here as soon as possible. OK, no worries. I'll uh, be there as soon as I can. OK, great, thanks. OK, okay bye. bye. Gee, that doesn't sound good. Head vet nurse Emma and locum vet Steph are at the clinic trying to stabilise a critical patient, six-year-old Wheaton Terrier, Charlie. So this morning we get a call about Charlie to say that he's off his back legs. Um, so I was expecting to just find Charlie a little bit stiff and not able to get up. What I found was a completely different story. 
Charlie's a fantastic dog. He's been coming to my practice for a number of years now and we're all really fond of him. But he's been really unwell of late. And if he's gone into the practice for an emergency, you know it's gonna be bad. When Charlie arrived into the practice, when we finally got him back, he was barely breathing. He was semi-conscious, but he was also in a lot of pain. So Steph and I started Charlie's immediate care along with the other nurses. But as Charlie is one of Scott's long-standing patients, we know that we just need to get him back in the building as soon as possible. Oh, How are you, Maz? How is he? Hanging in there, but barely. OK. Right, guys, what have we got? Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Oh, yeah. OK, so we've got Charlie here. Just like Bam Bam, Charlie's family is also away on holiday. The grandparents called the practice to say the Wheaton Terrier had collapsed. We went to the house to go and see um, what the situation was. He and, seems and, quite um, painful even now. Have yeah, you yes. We've given him something for pain. So we've given him some pain relief. We assessed the situation, got him over here, because he was collapsed. Um, he was I really he in a was bad way. dead on the scene when yeah, we really? saw him this yeah. morning. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Charlie has a condition called immune-mediated thrombocytopenia. It's basically where his own body is attacking platelets, and those are the cells important for clotting blood. Right now, his platelet count is at an all-time low. He's bleeding everywhere, and he's in real trouble. We're unsure as to exactly what has caused the body to behave that way, but we have a feeling that he may have a condition called leishmania. Leishmania is a very nasty disease spread by sand flies, particularly in southern Europe. Charlie went on a holiday recently. He must have been bitten when he was away on holiday. He's come back, and this condition is manifested in lots and lots of different ways. His kidneys are affected, his skin's affected, uh, his joints are affected. He is a very, very unwell dog right now. Well, I can see straight away that his gums are exceptionally pale. And the particular um, hemorrhaging. You can see he's got some hemorrhages. So well. we've done some initial blood work. The blood work shows that he is severely anemic and he, right. he is actually going to need a, a blood transfusion. Okay. His platelet count is, there aren't any. Okay. Um, as you know, lowest it should be is about 35%. His okay. is at 15. Right, so it's yeah. no surprise yeah. he's bleeding from everywhere. He's, ble he's bleeding from everywhere. That... and. Time, time is of time the essence. Is of the essence. That's yeah. right. Okay. So and, I think um, what the big thing is now is about the blood transfusion. So yeah. in this instance, of course, we would normally do blood typing to be able to yeah. determine if there'd be any reaction. We just don't I have time, time here. So we need quite a bit of blood for Charlie. So as a result, we need quite a large dog to provide it. The only person I can think of that's got a dog of any half decent size is Nathan. Yes. So let's give him a Lovely yell Maisie. and pull in Maisie and, uh, and see if she can donate some blood for little Charlie here. So the main medical issue that Charlie is suffering with is anemia. So he has a low red blood cell count. He's very pale, he's struggling to breathe. So what we're trying to do is to supplement the red blood cells by giving him a blood transfusion. Hello. Hey, Nath, it's Maz. Charlie's been rushed in this morning and he's in a really bad way and we need to do a blood transfusion urgently. Is there any way you'd be able to bring Maisie in? Sure, not a problem. I'll be on my way now. Amazing. Thank you. It only takes 10 minutes for Nathan to arrive with Maisie. Yeah, All right, you're going to be a good girl. I know she's just a young girl. Do you reckon she'll stay still for this, or...? I don't know. I'm going to have to think it's a bit of a struggle, but we'll yeah. go. So a bit of sedation is probably the way to go? Yeah, I yeah. think so. OK, hello, baby. It's great that Nathan has allowed us to take the blood from Maisie. She's a big dog, so she can give us the volume that we need. And it's just so important for Charlie that he gets this blood transfusion. It's really the only chance that he's got for survival. Yes, I think so. Oh. Okay. Okay. Right. OK, come on, calm down. So calm down, Maisie, come on. Poor Maisie, she's still really young. She doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, and let me do it. Oh, Maisie. It's so hard to see your dog so stressed, but you know it's for a good cause, and if we can help save Charlie, then it needs to be done. This is coming out very fast, nicely, actually. She's obviously got good blood pressure. Nice, big, 
healthy young dog. Mate, you're a generous soul for doing this, or should I say Maisie's a generous soul for doing this. She might save a life doing this. She's done all the hard work, eh? Charlie has touched the hearts of everyone here at the practice. He is such a beautiful, sweet-natured dog who's really been through hell and back with all the conditions that he's suffered of late. Charlie's owners are some of the best. You know, they really are great people. And like anyone, they deserve a holiday. But right now, they're thousands of miles away trying to make a decision about their dog that they love, who's in our clinic right now fighting for his life. And I'm sure their hearts are breaking. Oh, sweetheart. Scott, Charlie's crashing, I need you now. Okay. Yeah. At the Richmond practice, Scott's desperately trying to save six-year-old Charlie. The Wheaton Terrier collapsed earlier today. The chest is starting to fill with fluid. She's filling with fluid. I mean, she's bleeding out. She's really not looking good. His family is on holiday overseas. Yeah, get the crash box. Charlie's condition means that he has absolutely no platelets. So that means he can't clot blood. He is bleeding from absolutely everywhere. He's in real grave danger, and we need to give him this blood transfusion now. So yeah. we just got to go with it. Anything is better than nothing, surely. OK. It only takes a few minutes for the transfusion to take effect. There's definitely an improvement in that color. There's no doubt about that. Charlie was starting to deteriorate quite rapidly. His breathing was getting more and more labored and his color was getting worse and worse, paler and paler. So thankfully, we've managed to get the blood transfusion into him just in time and he is responding. Mm -hmm. It's just a waiting game now, isn't it, I guess? It's gonna do its job, I yeah. hope. Yeah, well, yeah. We just have to give it some time and see if he manages to survive long enough for his red blood cell count to be replenished. But who if knows how long... If we can get that up, we, we may have a chance. Mm. We've literally done everything we can do for Charlie now. There's nothing left. All we can do is hope that he makes it through the night. I just have no clue as to where this is going to go. The next morning, Emma is on her way to work early. After yesterday's emergency, Scott finally ordered her to go home to get some rest. Now, she has only one question on her mind. Hey. Good morning. How is the boy? He didn't make it. Yeah. The news for Charlie isn't good. Uh, sadly, he passed during the night. He, um, he battled hard and, and, you know, everyone just worked so hard with him. But um, he was just so, so unwell, desperately unwell. And uh, yeah, he slipped away in the night. So, yeah. I'm absolutely heartbroken to hear that Charlie's passed away. Um, yeah, I don't have many words at the minute. Oh, it really, really sucks. Yeah. And you do so much and you try so hard. He's left a hole behind. And it's, um, yeah, it's gonna take us a, a while to get over, over his passing, because he, uh, he was a special boy and we're all gonna miss him. We've done our absolute best. <laughs> Yeah. Ugh. I know. It sucks. It's very hard to break the news to Emma that Charlie had passed. She put in such an amazing Herculean effort uh, to keep him going until I got into the practice and uh, was there by his side constantly. She's devastated that he's passed on. Well done. He was a brave boy until the end, as he was with everything that life threw at him, but he he tried his best and he fought hard. Um, and I just hope now he's in a in a better place. Hello. 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 Hi, hey, 
guys. How you hey. doing? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Bit of a rough day. <sighs> yeah. Just, just sucks, you know? It can't just be your veterinary knowledge that makes you do this job. It can't be. You've got to have a level of compassion. You've got to feel it right in here. And poor Charlie. He's had a lot going on and a lot going wrong, sadly, but he flipping fought, you know? Oh, he went as long he? as he could. He really did. He, he did everything he could. He just got yeah. a bit tired. Yeah. They're your friends. They've become your friends. You get to know the cats, you get to know the dogs, you get to know the rabbits, you know. You get to know them all. And then when it doesn't end how you want it to end, it crushes him, of course it does. He's only human at the end of the day, you know what I mean? He's a pretty decent human, but he is only human, you know, and, and he's got a, a heart as big as anything. Cup of tea to Charlie. Yeah. So Thanks, Mass. It's always really hard to lose a patient, particularly one that's a firm favourite of the practice like Charlie. But you know what? The job still needs to be done, so you've got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get on with the job. Right, you, on best behaviour. I still need to find a home for a blind parrot, and I certainly know the first place I'm gonna try. Here we go. Hi, guys. Hey. Look who yeah. I've got. You got the pretty. Hello, darling. Hello. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> she loves Girl. trying to eat Scotty. Now remember, she's a bit wild, so that's why she's having a bit of a nibble of Scotty's fingers. <laughs> so the interesting thing, guys, is that your bird's actually blind. So, so she, she can't can, see. She can't see, I'm afraid, no. Um, she can definitely hear me. You watch. She's <laughs> 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 like, wow. is she like, how? Dare you I say know. that? <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe I was being a bit cheeky in bird, was I? But you can see that she can hear me, which is great. So she hasn't lost all of the senses, but she can't see. I think it was quite sobering for the family to hear that the bird is blind. But it's amazing the amount of pets that we treat that are blind and their families deal with them very well. It's about making sure that their environment doesn't change very much and just understanding the sensibilities of a bird that can't see. Unfortunately, because she's blind, she can't go back to the wild. And also, because she really shouldn't be flying around with all of our very important British species, mm -hmm. she also can't go back to the wild. So, oh um, so kids, um, would you like a bird? Yeah. Yeah, I we think so. What a great people. idea. Let's keep a bird. Look how excited Mummy is about it. <laughs> so uh, so excited. Yeah, I can see that. That's brilliant. Can we have a chat? <laughs> Hanging out with Dawny and the kids has really put a ray of sunshine into a fairly dark day. What do you think? <laughs> and even though I've totally railroaded my sister-in-law, Dawny, into taking the parrot, I know that this is the right home for this gorgeous little bird with very special needs. So what kind of name do you think we could come up with this little girl? Kia. Kia, yeah. Kia. Where did you get that name from? Um, it's a cartoon called Just In Time. Okay. A cute little name, and I always think if you name a pet, you've got to keep it. So it looks like their family's increased by one feathered friend. Hey, Scotty, I have a question. Oh, yes. Um, how, how long is Kia going to live? Uh, well, um, 30 years or so. <laughs> ah, cool. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Scott. Well, uh, I mean that. Thanks. You I, know, I can really, I like, can tell. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. yeah. So where is she going to live? That's a really good question. Probably the same question I had to ask myself with the, the battery hens, the dog, the two cats, and any other of the crazy animals that come passing by my house that have needed somewhere to live. Uh, I suspect here, that's where she's going to live. And I've got another animal in my house. And I shall just rename my house the Ark. Yes. She's a happy, healthy girl. She just can't see. She can't see how utterly happy you are. <laughs> I see she's made a few marks on your fingers from her claws. It'll be 
really, really love her. No, we really, 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 really love her. <laughs> Actually, no, we really, 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 really love her. That's it, look how she's listening to you. Key is a very lucky bird. The kids are in love with her, and yes, she's a blind bird, but I think, given the right care, she's going to be a very happy bird and seemingly also a happy family. Come on, trouble. There we go. Good girl. For Emma, the best therapy is the newly arrived V. A quiet walk through Richmond Park is helping her come to grips with the loss of Charlie. She's my outlet. She doesn't talk back, she's a good listener, so you can get rid of any frustration, and it's therapeutic. The bond that we have is something quite special, so to have her as my support system is magic. Hello, mates. Oh, you're looking perky today, aren't you? Hey, you want to go home and see Mummy? Let's hope we can make that happen, shall we? Come and on. finally, Bam scales, Bam's yeah. diabetes yeah. is under control. Bam Bam is doing fantastically well. He's putting on weight every single day. He's eating and drinking really well, and his bloods are looking beautiful. So he's very much in the right position to go home. Now it's owner Alyssa's job to take on all the hard work. What a clever lad. What a clever boy. You ready to go home? I know that Alyssa has been dreadfully concerned about Bam Bam while she's been away. Now she's back, I'm sure she just cannot wait to get her hands on him. Look who's this. Hey, Alyssa, oh, how are you? Oh, how are you? Who's oh, that? Oh, Mr. Solmash, how are you? Hi, Bam Bam. Who's that? Is that Mummy? Shh. Oh, he's been dying to see you. Oh, me too. Miss him so much. Bam, bam. Well, look, I've got lots to tell you about, so let's pop into the concert room. We'll go through everything. Thank Come you. On. Have you ever had to give injections to a pet before? No, never. This is going to be first time. How are you feeling about that? No worries. I hope I did it. I can do it. Bam Bam now requires twice daily insulin shots to combat his diabetes. It's a big ask for Alyssa. So you can suck that up using that syringe for me. Perfect. Pop it through the skin. You'll feel an actual pop. Oh, it's going to be hard. You can do it. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Be brave. That's it. Well done. That's it. Good and job. then? So you suck it back a little bit and then inject. I know, I know, that's it. Good sorry, job, well done, well done. Sorry. Well done you as well, it's hard to do, it's really hard to do. So no worst. I know, I know, but you'll get better and better at it and he'll get better and better at taking it, all right? Good boy, Bam Bam. Hey, Mommy's so good. It's really tough as an owner to give an injection to your pet if you've never given one before, because it is inflicting a very small amount of pain. But what Alyssa's got to remember is that Bam Bam's life depends on those injections and she's just got to make it happen. All Thank the best. You. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Bye, Bam Bye. Bam. See you, mate. Bye-bye. See bye -bye. ya. Let's go home with Mummy Bam Bam.